In this video, we'll complete our video series on basic gateway setup by applying some firewall rules to our corporate and guest networks. I've connected my laptop to our guest network. You can see that I currently have full access to the corporate network. Our aim is to prevent guests from being able to access the corporate network. Starting from the network operations screen, navigate to our group under the context filter. Click on devices, select the gateways tab and click on config. Select the security tab, click on applications and expand application visibility. We're going to enable deep packet inspection, IP classification and reputation and geolocations. Click on Save Settings. The gateway will reboot. These changes will put a bit more load on our gateway, but it'll also give us more visibility and control over network traffic. Now, we'll create our guest firewall policy. Click on the Policies tab. Click on the plus sign to create a policy. Give it a name and click on Save Settings. Select the newly created policy and click on the plus sign under the Policy Rules section. Scroll down to edit the rule. Since our corporate networks are all in 10 dot space, we'll deny access to the entire 10 dot subnet. Let's create another rule. This time blocking access to any websites with a high risk reputation. Lastly, we'll add a permit any any rule at the bottom to allow the rest of the traffic. To apply this policy to the guest network, navigate to the Apply Policy tab and select the GE0 interface. Click on the plus sign under the interface section, type VLAN99 and make sure Trusted has been checked. Select our newly created guest policy from the Policy pull down menu and click on Save Settings. Select interface GE0 again and let's review our changes. We can see that all of our VLANs are still trusted and that we've only applied the guest policy to our guest network. Remember, a trusted interface without any policy applied will allow all traffic through by default. If we now log into the guest network, we'll be denied access to the corporate network. But we'll still have our internet connectivity. We're going to take a slightly more sophisticated approach to securing our corporate role. Let's assume that our aim is to prevent employees from accessing job search and real estate websites while at work. Click on the Policies tab and the plus sign to create a new policy. Call it Block Job Search. Click on the plus sign in the Rules section and scroll down to edit the rule. Change service to Web Category and select Job Search as the category we want to block and click on Save Settings. Create a new policy to block access to real estate websites. We'll combine these two policies into a role. Click on the Roles tab and click on the plus sign. Let's name this role Employee. Select the newly created role and click on the plus sign under the Policies section. Select the Add an existing policy option. Find and select the Block Job Search policy and click on Save Settings. Repeat the process for the Block Real Estate policy. And at the end, add an Allow All policy. Please note the policies are executed in order and only the first match will apply. You can drag and drop the policies to rearrange the order. In order to apply the role, we need to associate it with a AAA profile. Navigate to Role Assignment. Select the AAA profile and click on the plus sign. We'll name it Corporate. Initial role is a role given to a user prior to successful authentication. It should allow limited access to the network, just sufficient to facilitate authentication. Now, here is the tricky bit. Since we are not setting up authentication in this video, we'll set the initial role to Employee. This means that every user that connects will automatically be placed in the Employee role, even before the authentication takes place. This is not a recommended best practice, but just a way for us to demonstrate role-based policy enforcement. Let's also change the default role for Mac 
and .1x authentication. These roles would be assigned to a successfully authenticated user if your authorization server did not send any role attributes. Now you can see how powerful and flexible role-based authorization can be. Click on Save Settings. Navigate to Apply Policy. Select Interface GE0 and click on the plus sign under the Interface section. Enter VLAN 10. Make sure the trusted box is unchecked. Remove VLAN 10 from the first line and click on Save Settings. Click on GE0 to review our changes. The VLAN 10 interface is no longer trusted, which means that the gateway will now track user sessions for each connected IP address. And it will also require a AAA profile to be assigned to the VLAN. Untrusted is the recommended setting for your LAN ports and VLANs. To finish our configuration, scroll down to the VLAN section, select VLAN 10, and set our corporate AAA profile, and click on Save Settings. Let's connect our laptop to the corporate network. Let's go back to Central and click on the Clients button in the Context menu. You can see our laptop has successfully connected and has been assigned into the employee role. Now, let's test our network access. We can freely browse the web, except for job search and real estate sites. And that concludes our five video Aruba SD Branch Setup Basic Series. For more how to videos, please visit phoenixpro.club. Please click like and subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest content. Thank you for watching.